Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician. The Civil War, after some time off to recover from a pretty significant illness on my part, I'm ready to dive back into this campaign. If you haven't seen the campaign up to this point, there's a link in the description that'll take you back to the beginning. It's the end of May, 1862, and uh, the Confederates have a significant manpower advantage that we're trying to catch up to right now. They're at nearly 300,000 men to our just over 200,000. Uh, but we are in a good place to launch our spring campaigns as we build up our supply base right at the edge of various areas where we're going to be launching attacks into the south. We already have taken Nashville, and we've got two Confederate armies caught in between here. So as soon as Grant is able to build up his supply base and get his army fed, we'll launch them south with the army of uh, mississippi we will launch north with the army of i believe this is the army of the ohio down here under mcclellan uh, almost ninety thousand men between them and we should be able to get these guys in a pincer but it looks like they may pull back first because they're in a bad situation in the meantime the confederates are building up pretty strong around corinth we've got the army of the west over here twenty eight thousand strong under harney uh, but we're going to use them mostly in the Trans-Mississippi Department as needed. We're probably going to have to launch all three of these armies toward Corinth to be able to deal with all of them. There is a Western Army up here that I'm a little concerned about, 16,000 strong. We'll probably go ahead and send our Army of Indiana uh, to go confront them. So let's send Sherman's Army, Thomas Sherman's Army, over to Cairo where we already have a base of supply and we can deal with the Western Army there. June 10th now, he's at nearly 300,000 men. We're at 220 and counting. We're just about complete with the military two policy, which is going to allow us to form armies for the first time. Right now, our armies are technically just large core, so it's going to require a complete restructuring of our armies once we have completed that. So I'll go ahead and do that kind of off camera, but it looks like we've got a number of Confederate forces converging on McClellan here. McClellan's got about 40,000 men. It's gonna be pretty even numbers, but he's got 119 guns. So dang, that's gonna be interesting. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna be on the Stones River battlefield here. You can see the town of Murfreesboro there. We're coming in from the Northwest with McClellan's army. We are gonna be fighting defensively. Uh, looks like the Objectives are right here near Overall Creek. We've got Stones River over here. So we may let him come up at us from there. I may just sit behind these objectives and defend real close to where we are. Okay, so we've uh, built some parapets at these crossing points. Uh, for a little added protection as best I could, anyway. And then we're just going to sit tight, try to defend when he comes across. Use the artillery as much as we can. And then we'll see what happens. We're going to be outnumbered, but hopefully we've got a strong defensive position that we can guard against whatever he chooses to do. All right, here's our first sight of the enemy coming in over near our left, one brigade. I don't know where the rest of them are. And remember, we have multiple armies converging on our position, so they could be coming in from different places. But at least one part of his force is going to come in right at our strong point here near the Nashville Turnpike. We'll just let him come to us, though he may sit tight just short by grabbing these objectives. I have one brigade, the Buckeye Bandits, sitting over here on this side of the river. Let's see what happens. So I think for the time being, I'm going to start shifting some of this artillery over, just because it doesn't appear that there's too much happening on this front. Uh, these three inch ordnance rifles and the 12 pound Napoleons that I've got over here, I've got a nice open field, a good spot to set up these guns. So if he does start coming down here, we ought to be able to hit him. My 12 pounders right here are firing and they are causing some casualties to the enemy. Not a lot, but 40 so far. 
All right, so he's starting to move a couple of brigades down on us over here now. I don't have any artillery there because I moved them all over here. Uh, and this artillery is starting to open up on my brigade of cavalry that's out here. The problem is giving them orders to do anything is going to take a while. So I'm kind of hesitant to move them out. But I think I will go ahead and see if I can't take out this battery. It'll just take some time for those orders to get there. I think I hear small arms opening up. The Carolina Loyalists and Rex's Raiders. Looks like it's mostly the Carolina Loyalists that are opening up on Ruggles Brigade. He's building his battle line right here, which is kind of interesting, probably because he sees these guys over here. He just moved down to take that other objective. All right, here goes Gorman. They're going to take Steele's battery. This is the Buckeye Bandits, and they're scarlet and gray. Take them down, boys. Anything I can do to reduce that huge advantage he has in terms of guns on this battlefield. I don't think Ruggles is going to be able to sit there for very long with his flank exposed like that. Alright, I think we wiped out that battery or we're about to. Come on, use melee. Finish these guys off. Otherwise, I'm going to sit tight. I'm going to make him come at me. There we go. We destroyed that battery. He's got an advantage in numbers. He's got a huge advantage in morale on me. And now he's going to have the objective, so we have to be cautious. All right, let's pull this cap back. I'm actually going to pull them back to cover this crossing here. All right, so we've got more brigades coming down. On this road here, we do have the second cavalry over here to guard that crossing. So it's a good thing I did put them out on the wings because he is taking a very wide approach to come at me. And I don't have fortifications over here. I may have to advance out to push back and try to grab this objective. Maybe we'll send Burbank out to do that. See what we can do. He's a division that only has one brigade in it right now. Okay, we've reached the end of the day. We're on to deployment and oh my gosh, it forced me back. Broadhead had to pull back from that crossing. That is not an ideal situation there. So let's see if we can hurry him back up to that crossing before they can get across. You can see now they're really starting to load up. At some point they're going to try to attack me, and I don't know if I can hold him if he pushes on my right too much. I'm going to send Burbank's lone brigade over there to help out. But the majority of his men are over here on my left. And for some reason, this cavalry, the Buckeye Bandits, ended up back across the river. I don't know why that is. Let's hurry up and pull them. I don't know why he's spreading out all the way over there. There's not a crossing over there, I don't think. Uh, I'm a little nervous about this. All right, he's got three battalions of artillery that are going to start unloading on Broadhead's cavalry in their first combat. And these guys only have mixed muskets, so they're not ideal for dealing with them, but I don't really have much choice right now. That's all I've got available. Get right up to the riverbank, start firing on them. Hopefully they don't get driven back too quickly. I'm probably going to have to ride across with my calf. Try to strike these guys. The 
best I can. But there's three batteries here, so even if I hit one of them, the other two are going to be firing into me. Oh, we might be able to disrupt them after all. Looks like it's working. Looks like Burbank's going to send his men across now. Uh, cavalry just broke. But I think they did their jobs. They disrupted the artillery. Nothing happening near our center here. And he's pretty content to sit there and not attack. Let's send... Uh, yeah, let's, do we have any other divisions that only have single numbers? No, I guess not. Just Burbank. All right, we'll pull them back across. Well, my artillery here just drove off some more of his guns. So I think we've pretty well evened out the artillery situation. So that's nice. But I think we're going to probably have to advance somewhere at some point. We're not going to be able to just sit here. Although he's got more men moving into position over here, so I think I'll still sit tight. But you can see here, casualties, only 323 for me, 1,200 for him. But those objective points are going to start to add up if I don't move out and grab an objective at some point. So I may have to go ahead and move Sherman forward. Try to grab this objective back. And if he's going to sit over in here, maybe we just try to drive these guys off and then push over this way a little bit. We'll see what happens. I actually went ahead and halted Sherman's order to advance because it looked pretty clear that these guys were going to advance on me first. So that's perfect because I'm in a parapet uh, defensive situation, which is perfect for dealing with Garnett's brigade. So we'll tear them up, and then once we've thrown back his advance then will advance with Sherman's brigade brigades so these guys don't have the best weapons we've got planes rifles here I guess we these other ones have Springfields but in this strong defensive position you can see we've got a huge advantage in terms of the casualties We'll go ahead and bring Sidney Burbank around over here with his lone brigade. Still doing pretty good. 90 losses for George Taylor's brigade. He's the only one losing anybody right now, but we've inflicted 240 on Garnet. Let's see what happens when we get these guys around. He doesn't appear to be doing much of anything. Oh, there's a second brigade coming in now. They're going to be loading up on Taylor, so I'm a little concerned. Oh, there's a third one. So that's a whole division coming in at Asbury Church. at Burbank. Twenty one hundred casualties inflicted, we've taken five hundred eleven. Ah, oh, he's shifting more brigades this way. Smart move. Take advantage of the numbers. Why are his skirmishers still way back there? Bring them in. And then send them out again. Because he can't reach from there. He's got mixed muskets. 
Barksdale's their division commander. That's cool. Alright, now send the skirmishers out. Start to mess with him a little bit there. Taylor's taking a lot of casualties, though. Steele's battalion marched off. Let's bring these 12-pounder Napoleons over here. This Taylor's probably going to break at some point, and we can at least move those guns in over there on that side. Oh, especially now, because he just threw Armistead out there on Taylor's flank. AI's making some good moves right now, actually. Now he's starting to try and move around Burbank's flank. He's taking advantage of my sta my stationary position. All right, let's send the second cab over there to help out. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to hold here. Burbank's brigade just broke. There goes Taylor. I do have the guns over here now, uh, Phil Kearney's guns, but they're low on ammo. We'll try to inflict some casualties, but I think we're probably not going to be able to hold. Well, let's see what happens, because he's going to try to cross over here. guys dismount they ought to be able to occupy those fortifications man it's a pretty bloody battle considering most of both armies are not really doing a lot. Phil Kearney's low on shells. That's not helpful. It's not even noon yet. Alright, we broke one of the Confederate brigades. Come on, Broadhead. Get up there. Get into those fortifications. How we doing here? All right, drove off another one. This is William Tecumseh Sherman's division. Says Nola has only lost one man. Tenth Brigade's only lost ten men. Still trying to get Broadhead to move into position over here. All right, what's happening here? Smoky Mountain Brigade. And we got these three inch guns here. I want them on counter battery fire as much as possible. That rifled artillery is ideal for that. Alright, things have quieted down again. Let's see what happens. I need to resupply my guns. 12% losses for the enemy, only 4% for me. The objectives are an issue, though. All right, so I had to pull Zealous Tower's battery back. They were taking some casualties over here, uh, these three-inch ordnance rifles. And when I did, he started advancing some of his brigades over toward the Smoky Mountain Brigade. So now they've been engaged in some small arms fire. We've also got uh, our second battery, which is Charles Smith's Napoleon's firing on them now. It 
a lot of artillery over here, though. Some more Confederate brigades that look like they're rallying back there. Alright, we drove them off. I just don't see a situation where we can retake the objectives easily, which means we're probably not going to win the battle, but we can take a lot of Confederates before we lose. Okay, we're getting uh, near the end of the day here, but I'm going to go ahead and start advancing with Rousseau's division. See if we can't press and try to get this objective back. We'll see what happens. I'm a little nervous that he might send these guys over here and hit me in the right flank, which would be devastating. He seems to be withdrawing a number of his units, though. He's pulled a bunch of them out. That's a lot of artillery sitting there. All right, we're going to try to take out those batteries. He sent Kenley's brigade right in there. Jeez. Seems like it's working. We can retake that objective, we might have a chance to win this battle. Considering the units that he's withdrawn so far. But at some point he's gonna get wise to this and he's gonna come after us here. just watching to see what these guys do here. Hopefully we can hold these brigades over there. Okay, we've reached the end of the day, which means we'll finally be able to resupply, uh, especially our guns. It's going to be helpful to be able to resupply. Uh, I'm going to redeploy these three-inch ordnance over here to this side so they can help out against these guys. I'm gonna hold Rousseau right where he is uh, and then we'll see what happens. I may need to move Hancock across here too. We may need to launch an attack on these guys. So maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll push Rousseau out here. Then we'll bring Hancock in over on this side. See if we can't make something happen here. I think Steele's division is probably... I don't know, they got three brigades. Okay. We'll push them right here. We're going to try to push these guys up against the river if we can. So we'll start with Rousseau. And Hancock will move. We'll, we'll stay right on the edge of this hill here. I'll bring Steele up a little bit as well. Send out some skirmishers. And then we'll just count on our boys being able to outshoot the enemy. Hopefully we can hold all of these brigades' attention here while we do this. Okay, over on the left, Rex's Raiders under John C. Fremont, Carolina Loyalists under Henry Judah, but this is where I'm trying to make this happen. probably see our casualty numbers go up some here. It's 
to keep an eye on these guys. They're holding steady so far. Alright, Steel, I just need you to hold. Let's get these three inch guns over here a little further. Alright, I think this is working so far. I need Rousseau to advance. Straighten out his line. I'm, I'm worried about Rex's Raiders. They're out there on the edge. They're already a, a smaller unit. They're taking a lot of casualties. We might need the Buckeye Bandits to come in and back them up. Alright, hopefully these three inch guns can help protect the flank a little bit. He's advancing with one brigade, it looks like. Florida militia, we ought to be able to hold them. Let's push Hancock forward. Yeah, Rex's Raider's not going to hold much longer. Who was wounded? Heyman, commander of the Spartan Brigade. Where's the Spartan Brigade? I don't even know where they are. That's Hancock's division. That's right here. Hancock's division is in a bit of a mess at the moment. So Rex's Raiders, as expected, have broken, but that's okay. I think we can hold over here. I really need Rousseau to start pushing forward. I don't know why he's not. I just need these guys to hold. Uh, the Buckeye Bandits are taking a lot of casualties. As I'm pushing back on this side, he's just loading up big time on single brigades over here. Spurgeon's Roughnecks are in pretty good shape here. I don't know why Hancock's division is so crooked like this. We need them to straighten out. Alright, there we go. We drove off Anderson's brigade. That helps a lot. Column's low on shells. He's been pouring steady fire into these guys over here. Yeah, there go the Buckeye Bandits. That's okay. Come on, Hancock. Get your guys straightened out. Alright, it's looking good. 12,000 enemy casualties. Almost 5,000 for us. There goes Judah. So one by one, these units have been breaking over here. All right, you know what? Let's send that whole division, let's send Russo's division in here to just try and crush the enemy flank. Tell him to assault. Hancock. Also assault. Let's finish these guys off. Let's push this thing all the way over and, and end this. Where's Rousseau going? No, you're assaulting over here, dude. Not up there. That's crazy. All right, it worked. I think the Confederates are breaking from this position. All right, he's in full retreat now. It's just kind of a mop-up mop operation. It's going to be a major victory because we pushed him up to 30% casualties, 13,000 men. 
So what looked kind of iffy for a while there, uh, seems like my slow and steady approach is going to work out for the best here. Now it's just a matter of seeing what the final numbers look like. All right, 5,000 losses on our side, 14,000 for him. The Battle of Nashville is a major victory for George B. McClellan. Who would have thought that would have happened? June 14th, 1862. We're actually going to wrap it up right there. Uh, not a lot happened, only two weeks of game time, but a major victory for us, and that certainly will help things as we try to consolidate our forces in western Tennessee. It seems that that's where the majority of the Confederate armies are right now. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we will be back soon with another episode. Thanks for watching.